workshop. Um, my name is Eliza. I'm with Christmas Victoria Budget in Greensboro, in Greensboro, North Carolina. And the past few years, I've been working with Andrew and other people in Greensboro to get TV in our city. Uh, my name is Crystal Pierre. I am a native New Yorker. I'm also on the board of PVP, which is Security Budget Project, but I've also participated in the process um, in this last cycle with Council District 8, which is East Harlem, um, also covers the Mock Haven area of the Bronx, um, so I participated as a delegate. My name is Andrew Trump. I'm just a community member in Greensboro, North Carolina, who's involved with participatory budgeting. I'm Isaac Javola Krolis. I work with the Participatory Budgeting Project. We're a small nonprofit based in Brooklyn. Uh, we develop and support participatory budgeting processes uh, in the US and in Canada. Currently, we work in New York City, Chicago, San Francisco, and Vallejo, California. And in addition to budgeting, we also uh, do research and evaluation of TV and also uh, provide public education on the subject. Happy to have you all here with us today. And so part of what PB is, is deciding how to spend money, whether it's in your school organization, whether it's in a city, or your nonprofit, or any other variety of spaces. Um, and so there's a lot of people in here in this room right now, and we're all from different places. Um, but one thing that attracts me to PB is the way that it can be used to help like realize our dreams, help us dream more, and think about the possibilities of being able to transform the communities that we're working in. And so part of the introduction of, so we can also like know each other's name, you know, know what's going on, is we're gonna introduce ourselves, trying to very quickly, say your name, and then um, if you had PB, so a way to decide money, how money is spent, and it can be however you define community, um, what that would be. And so I'll start to model, my name's Eliza, and I would like PB, towards uh, a mural program in my community where we can capture the stories of the beauty and art of resistance and struggle that happens in everyday communities, but it's transformative to how we live. So that's more color in the world, more paint. That's what I want TV for. So people want to model? Sure. Um, I'm Crystal. Um, I would like for TV money to be used to as um, big belly garbage cans in commercial corridors. I'm Andrew. I really want bike lanes in Greensboro so that I can get to work, get to the store. Yeah. Uh, and in my neighborhood, I just really love to see not a dog park, but a place where dogs can leave themselves that isn't the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> Some new system. Um, daily nuisance PD project. But um, how about uh, I'm Brian. Uh, I would like PV money to go towards uh, way better public transportation for Orlando, and also some uh, like some community food forest spaces and a composting program. Um, <laughs> I am Lyndon. I'm from uh, Brooklyn, or from San Francisco, living in Brooklyn. Um, I would be interested in seeing if there's some way for me to assist people to um, be able to stay in the communities and afford to rent because the rent keeps going up. I don't know. That's just a I'm Anna, and if I have PB in my community in New Haven, I would have affordable grocery stores in our communities. Um, I'm in I'd like to see PB in Spain, where I'm from, so I'd like to see how, how we can join it, but I guess in my community we're talking about how we would like to see like people deciding where to spend money like, for schools and how to like, distribute the money if there only be four schools within the school districts. My name is Brenda, and if I had um, PB in my community, I would like to see more schools in my Hello, my name is Marisol, I'm from Chicago, and if my community had TV and if Chicago had TV everywhere, um, I would like to see it used to redevelop brownfield sites um, into spaces that the community needs rather than private interests. 
My name is Parents. I'm from Brooklyn. Um, we have PV. I would like to see, help support uh, a co-op we're starting in Lefferts Gardens, and as well as other community gardens, uh, and uh, continue to support the new composting program. I'm Sam. I'm from Rochester, New York. Um, I think in my community, at uh, Brownfield Sites is, is is right up there and revitalizing the, the city because everyone's fled to the suburbs. Um, my name is Becca. I'm from Boston, um, and I'd like to see PV going to all types of anti-displacement efforts in gentrifying neighborhoods, so like jobs or whatever, whatever that might mean, um, to keep people in their spot even when all these students are changing neighborhoods. My name is Marcy, I'm also from Boston, and um, I'd love to see PV go towards more technology in schools. My name is Atid, I'm from New Jersey, and I'd like to see PV go towards uh, low-income housing in my community and uh, clean energy projects. My name is Nikki, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I'd like to see PV going into putting some recycling bins in public spaces. I've never seen one. Um, I'm Jesse. I'm from Massachusetts, but I live in Brooklyn. Uh, I would like to see PB go towards uh, like after school programs for young people, and also like job support for or like connecting youth with uh, with uh, yeah job support stuff in a way that's empowering. Uh, my name is Adrian, and I'm from Ontario. And I would actually like to see PV used in an organizational context and to sort of see how we can use PV to get people to vote on curriculum like for this university, like to vote on what kind of curriculum people actually want to have and what is truly valuable and needed out there. Hi, I'm Karina from Queens. Uh, I would like PV uh, to be used for uh, tree guards. So
So next, though, we're going to show you about some of the communities that PD is happening in, just to get a little bit more context. set up perfectly earlier. Isn't it the full screen on the bottom? Say that again. It's on the bottom of the to player. Like if you scroll down. And then go to the right. Other way? Uh, all right. Yeah, all the way over there. Uh, <coughs> try command zero. It resizes it to the... Lost it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Isn't it that other tab? Yeah, it's on the that tab. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, it's right behind. Command zero, someone said. Exploding. What's that? Okay, we got this. <laughs> series of budget delegate meetings and we narrowed down the list into about four or five projects 
what are the real needs of the community? If you only have a certain amount of money, what is it that you can do that's going to benefit as many people as possible? And, uh, we're asking for a projector and 30 Mac laptops. Bus countdown clocks. I'm dreaming of hot adventures. You benches, seniors have nowhere to go. People actually get a taste of governing in their city, of making the tough decisions and coming up with things that can be done to improve their community. And they bring them back to the public for a vote. It's a way of validating every voice in our community and saying, you know what, whatever your position is, you live in our community, you have a right to decide, and that me as a representative and government should respond and should listen to that voice. The project with the most votes gets funded. We have the playground improvements at Millbrook High. They are then implemented over the next few years, and the following year, the process starts again. People brainstorm new ideas, turn them into new projects, vote on them, and fund more improvements for their community. PB becomes part of the budget process. It becomes a new way of governing. I think this is like the greatest wave of democracy coming into the United States. Where it started was in Porto Alegre, Brazil in 1989. From there, it spread all over Brazil, Latin America, and at this point, over 1,500 cities around the world, and increasingly in North America. This was a great opportunity for you to be a part of government and better the city you live in. And who wouldn't want to take advantage of that? We're creating a more educated platform of voters overall. So I think this can only be good for the big project of democracy. So we've learned a lot about PB in the US. From, uh, especially from experimenting in Chicago and New York, most notably. In Greensboro, which is a city of about 260,000 people in North Carolina, our cell has been a little bit tougher because unlike Chicago and New York, council members don't have discretionary budgets. So in order to get PB, we need the council and the mayor to pretty much allow us to do it. Um, what we're asking for in Greensboro is 1% of the citywide budget going uh, being allocated through a participatory process, which would be about four million dollars. Yeah, um, and so to speak a little bit more about what PB looks like in New York City and Chicago, um, individual council members in those cities do get a pot of money each year specific to their districts, and it ranges anywhere in New York from uh, three million to fifteen million dollars. And so currently nine of the city's 51 council members here uh, have decided to use PV as a way to let the community decide how to spend part of that budget. Um, so this past year, a total of $10 million um, across eight city council districts were decided through PB. Um, now, that process uh, is different because it, it's not legal in, the term, in, in, in that it's not codified in any law or resolution as the folks in, Green, in Greensboro are pushing for. Um, so there are different models in different cities in different contexts. And that's just for participatory budgeting processes within the context of a municipality or city. Um, that's what this video focuses on. But as Eliza mentioned earlier, uh, any institution, organization, community with the budget can use PB to, to make fiscal decisions more democratically. So a few examples of that um, would be in Toronto, the tenants of Toronto's Public Housing Authority since 2001 have uh, decided on how to spend up to $6 million each year for improvements to their buildings and their facilities. Another example would be Brooklyn College here in New York City, one of the City University of New York colleges. Uh, last year there, on how to spend uh, $25,000 of the student government's budget. Uh, in another instance right now, Occupy Sandy is working with the Staten Island Long-Term Recovery Organization uh, to decide through a form of participatory budgeting how uh, relief funding and recovery funding will be spent in that community. So there, there definitely is flexibility through participatory budgeting. It's both a tool for um, 
democratizing existing political and economic decision making as in a municipal budget, but also as a tool for other organizations uh, to use uh, in their, in their uh, decision making as well. So just something to keep in mind, and we can speak more about that towards the end of this So we think the best way to learn about participatory budgeting is to participate. So what we're going to do today is um, break out and, and do some simulated or, or mock budgeting. And so first, Crystal's going to introduce us sort of the, the steps that a participatory budgeting process goes through. Right. So participatory budgeting um, is a cycle. Um, there's four steps to, that, to each cycle. So that first step is um, first community members come out um, to a neighborhood assembly, which is a forum in which people can voice their ideas on what they want this money to be spent on. Um, what the local needs in the community are, and um, you know what's what's most important as far as spending money in their community. Um, and during that process, they also identify um, delegates. So the delegate is responsible for representing the community and developing project proposals that best um, talk about you know the projects that were proposed. So that's step one. Coming out presenting ideas, choosing del um, project delegates to represent the community. The second step is really the project proposal stage. So during that stage, delegates um, identify, delegates work with city staff to um, develop strong proposals that include um, a dollar amount for how much that project would cost. At the end of that cycle or that step, um, the delegates also have an open Forum, which is a um, na not na neighborhood assembly, um, a project expo, right? So that's a, a public forum which community members can come back out to see how the delegates have um, created these project proposals based on the, the ideas they propose in the initial neighborhood assemblies. Um, so the third step would be voting. Um, at the voting sessions, um, you know, community members come out and vote on which projects they are in favor of. Um, the top winning projects um, are then those projects that are funded, which is step four. Um, so in step four, those winning projects are funded by um, whether it's a municipality or city council or university, whichever organization um, is responsible for funding the project. Um, so those projects are funded based on which projects are voted for the most, um, and then those projects are implemented, and community members uh, monitor that implementation, and also work with city staff to revise the process for the following year to make improvements. So that's the cycle, four steps in the cycle. So now um, Eliza's going to talk about uh, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, so today we're going to do steps one through three. So we're going to dream, come up with some projects, and then vote. And we're not going to actually implement projects today. Most likely, we don't have enough time. Um, so for the purposes of this activity, we're just going to imagine that we are a city. We have $500,000 to play around with. Um, and so we're going to break into four groups. And each group is responsible for submitting two project proposals. So the way you're going to do this is as a group, um, of about five people. Similar to what we were doing as we introduced ourselves, we're going to dream a little bit. So think about what your city could really benefit from. You can think about it in terms of capital projects, like bike lanes, or you could think about it in terms of services or, or programs. Um, it's pretty wide open in our city with our $500,000 budget. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, there's 23 of us, so it's kind of like, how do we do this? One, count off one through four. Four. And then if any extra stragglers, that's how we'll get you into your, the last group. And I know you're going to be like, but I'm not going to know anyone in my group. That's part of the beauty of PB is that in a lot of ways it brings people together that would have never had contact with each other. And that's you know how we get the synergy of new ideas that can help transform our communities in a more informed way. So if you would start. Group one, two, three, four, five. Or one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. one, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. 
four, one, two, three. Okay, so how about all the ones in this corner, the twos in that corner, the threes in that corner, and the fours in that corner? And we've got um, big pieces of paper and some markers for you all so you can put it together. Um, I also have some pieces of papers, so each group will get two. Um, you know, go through the idea of lots of ideas. We've got about 10 minutes for you to go through the process. Um, and in a real PD cycle, you can probably have a Get that working right now. Just go to internal. Yep, I'm about to get it. What? <laughs> To uh, jot down your, the initial list of ideas that y'all brainstorm together. And then, okay. and then once you get your final three projects that you want to present to the group, just write them on here and make, choose someone from the group to or ideas, Question. be your speaker. Are we assuming that these two projects are like the 500,000 or are we bring them no, back no, together? Just and then, no, projects at all. Just any projects, uh, the four of us will operate as a city manager and we'll decide the price. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so we can think about anything and then eat <laughs> real prices. <laughs> yes. right now we're just Keep it under 500 grand. <laughs> That's what we were saying. Uh, oh, that means. We get to choose the price. But yeah, so don't let the price limit you. Dream as grand as you want. And first two, like the first three steps and the first two steps. So you're. You're, this is kind we're of gonna like brainstorm and then brainstorm choose two, ideas. and we're gonna yeah. choose like a delegate, and that's gonna be the one speaking yeah. and presenting the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'll do. I'll do like the note taking. Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks. 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 My handwriting is awful, so you don't. I don't even understand. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that we have someone. Um, oh thanks. My dad is a pediatrician, so I was like shocked. The best thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I shared early. Oh, wait, have we even just talked about yeah. Oh, I think yeah. so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember any name now, but like, it's <laughs> um, So maybe we can, like, I don't know, like, we can go first to talk about things we care about our community or things we would like to see improve, or maybe we want to, like, throw, like, ideas we already have. Like, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, I like, I feel like we can go a little bit from what people brought up. Right. Because I thought there were great ideas in the intro. Oh, definitely. Like, I love the composting stuff that people were talking about. Um, I really like the idea of, like, the, like, especially, like, in low-income areas to, like, I don't know who said it, but, like, these youth programs to, like, um, invest money on so that they don't have, like, get them out of, like, violence and, and you know, like, Activities so that they can like, I don't know, just help it, help them to be out of like. Mm -hmm. um, another well, and also with youth programs, the, um, I have seen some really cool models of the revolving loan fund for specifically youth ventures, mm -hmm. kind of smaller amounts of money. Um, 
I, I do, I work with a lot of youth entrepreneurs, and that would be so helpful. Yeah. We're always looking for that. And actually, a mix between the composting and the gif, I saw in, it, there's a school in Harlem where they actually are implementing these composting programs in high schools, so that high school kids can join these, um, and they were like, they were composting all the leftovers from the, from the food they eat in the school, which is like a lot of like food they waste, and they were making their own compost, and they were like, even like, selling that, and make, even deciding what, like, what to do with the money. So it was a mix between like, you know, have young people like yeah. working on things like towards sustainability and teaching them why it's important to compose. And so, yeah, we got a combination there. Yeah. Um, can you explain a little bit about the revolving board fund? Because I know, like, I, I mean, people are talking about it, I just don't know exactly how it's different. Or well, it's, um, it's basically, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a model kind of similar to any sort of micro enterprise lending system. Okay. Um, but the idea would be that part of the money um you guys have the picture you can put that Whenever I see it's like so there would uh, be part of that five hundred thousand set aside as like the initial kind of capital for the loan fund and then people would um, apply with different basically projects that need capitalization. Like little like just like Yeah, I mean it, it, you know, the, the, the sort of committee that stewards the the loan fund would like, yeah. determine the terms. Like maybe one year if there are two grant cycles, one is like under a thousand dollars and then one is like twenty five thousand dollars for one. Um, but then as they if you were in the finan like financing the economy um, piece, like the cool thing about it is that there there would be interest that would accrue on on the loans, but it would go back into the loan fund. Yeah. Um, so the idea is that over time the loan fund would increase, um, but would always be more sort of surplus and always be reinvested in the community. It also seems like a great way to fund planning stuff. Mm -hmm. Which the like I don't know which like the initial big grant doesn't yeah. It might be interesting to also add on to that uh, mentoring programs with some kind of other services because it's not just the financial, but a lot of the startups, yeah. the challenges that they have are like they don't know the accounting or they don't know the taxation, like all that kind of stuff. And in terms of like revolving loan funds, another interesting one is um, using renewable energy sources, like putting in windmills, for example, and then having all the income from that go back into loans and um, more participating budgeting, basically. Um, Co there have been some cool um, cooperative solar projects um, that could potentially be scaled up a lot faster if there was another um, sort of, uh, I guess, an, an investor, which would be the community in this case, um, like where people sort of pull their money and they put up a solar panel and the savings that are generated um, over the long term get put into this pool of money to buy more solar panels. Yeah. So at this school. point, start to think about narrowing down your initial set of ideas into two projects that you'll propose for the, the ballot that we'll vote on. Okay? Um, so what do we have? So oh yeah, like let's everyone say something. What you want to add something Just that you... Just with the um, loan how, fund, I'd why love to see it being covered in what you usually call the funding circles, mm -hmm. as opposed to individualized, to so kind of build that idea of like mutually reinforcing everyone supporting each individual entrepreneur as it goes through, because it's seen as a good model. And I really like what you added in about the kind of technical support. The only other thought I had was the replacement of predatory um, businesses. So the two that I'm thinking of are uh, check cashing and um, tax refund prices. And so then the actual replacement of those with a publicly supported one that's free and it's not actually taking the large share of it and then or even just about like a much lower percentage of it's reinvesting the community as opposed to extracting. What was so the second one? Check cashing. Check cashing and then uh, tax refunds. Tax refunds. Your Jackson Hewitt's and your um, I forget the name of the other one. But, uh, so Got it. That seems like we can like Combine move that into two like pretty 
solid ones. Right, like there's there's the replacement of those programs, which I, I feel like is separate from a revolving loan fund that could get into both renewable energy and composting and, and use stuff all in one. One massive awesome project. Right, like I feel like to replace those like those check cashing and cash refund things would go along with monitoring and like monitoring programs or educational stuff like this is what it means to, to switch the way we use our money. Like, so it's kind of like an educational component. Like this is why we're doing these programs. Like this is why it's important to not have these these processes going on with our money, but like this alternative instead. So how would exactly the how where would the money like to replace the those businesses would the would the community money go in sort of like into the building like paying people or like yeah. covering staff expenses or like additional capital like what would, what would it go to exactly? Um, which the money we get from the yeah. from the city to yeah, like if we got funded five hundred thousand dollars to do that. Uh, I, I would think that it's a big public information campaign at first because like the uh, like the predatory business kind of exist in key locations and also kind of like easy money through like kind of passive thing that's really yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that it would be a big thing about like why are you going to get you know thirty percent of your kind of uh, uh, like your tax refund taken away when you can do this for free and so a lot of it has that changing okay. in the first year yeah. and then the idea is that it's institutionalized so the earlier you do it then it can be we you have to like set up the business, like have the space, like probably use it to facilitate. Oh, well, we have to write things down. Okay. Get your two, get ready for present. Do you have an iPhone writing? Like, am I really? No. Okay. Um, okay. Well, right. so she's got it. Is that one idea? One on each. So we need one on each? Yeah, we need, we need two, yeah. Okay. Two on each. Do you want to write the one for the one you were just talking about? Yeah. 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 And then do you want to write? You want to do the revolving? The revolving energy, okay. use, 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 sustainability, <laughs> um, a community, like a community empowerment, revolving loan fund. Yeah. And can we put the mentorship in there too? Yes. Okay. Community, let's see, it's, it's community empowerment. Maybe intergenerational too, because I know there's a lot of focus on youth, but really it's like the yeah. yeah. That was yeah. an interesting question. That was an interesting why don't we say community empowerment probably loan fund and incubator? Right? Yeah. The energy incubator? Do we want to do like just I think, I think let, it, focus let it go? On, yeah. yeah. I, incubation focusing on the sort of technical piece. Yeah. Cool. She's talking about so um, this loan fund would provide seed funding. Projects like <laughs> projects with like large social environmental impact because we don't know what those could be. So we don't yeah. want to define it too much. Projects that and this is like it's also like participatory uh, racing, right, participatory right, vaccine. Right, People would like to actually choose like what they want to like. Fine, right? Yeah. 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 So it's like participatory within a participatory system. Yeah, we're I'm trying to make stuff up. I'm calling it rope replacement of predatory enterprises. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Alrighty, alrighty. Twenty more seconds. Twenty more seconds. Uh, someone else other than this group starts. <laughs> delegates, delegates. Yes, do we have? Woohoo! Group three, group three. Yeah. Part of this process is, is selling us on it. So we'll all be voting. So make us really want to vote for your project. So I'm from Boston, so forgive the reference, but we all love the dirty water in Boston. Um, and in our community, our imaginary community has some dirty water. And 
The water's actually clean enough to swim in, but you can't step on the ground because it's toxic. So we want to get this like net thing so you can swim in it. <laughs> and then um, have some barbecue pits on the, <laughs> on the grassy spot as well. So it's like a swimming hole with barbecue and there's music as well. It's going to be awesome. Everybody can have a party. So that's one project. Okay. And the second project is in another space with a community garden and um, composting space so that um, the city's compost can end up there. for our first one and we're going to have a community food and ecological space so this is the idea of having open space for our community to um, engage and um, create relationships and foster those relationships but uh, part of that is that we're going to have a sustainable food forest so food that are trees and um, uh, trees and plants that actually provide produce that people can eat and harvest themselves um, and with that we're going to have um, the sort of um, apprenticeship program where there will be the master gardeners or some sort of person tending to these plants, especially at the beginning of like the creation of this project, and then have students working with um, these gardeners and caretakers to learn these skills as well. So it's a uh, there's an <laughs> 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 ecological is space and then separately an apprenticeship program? No, with that. Uh, the second idea. No, we're still talking about what the first one is. We have to find out <laughs> what the first one is. Yeah, but she was confused about this. Okay, so no, I wasn't too sure if that was just very long-winded. Yeah, it was, okay. yeah. that's so, one long okay. project. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the second project? Um, just building affordable housing in our community that takes into account, you know, the local businesses and the local cost of living, so that people who move to that housing can also afford to live there. Uh, so one of the things we were concerned about is the way that wealth gets stolen from community by um, predatory uh, practices like check cashing places and tax refund services. So we developed a project called Rope, which is the replacement of predatory enterprises. So we'd like this funding to <laughs> we'd like the money to fund uh, the creation of public mobile locations. Um, to actually provide these services in communities, and so um, with a much uh, a much reduced kind of fee that these kind of predatory um, enterprises do, and then that money would actually then be reinvested instead of what it does now, which is going to get pulled out. So that's <coughs> a rope. What would say? What Replacement of predatory enterprises. Okay. And we think that there's like a lot of, uh, that, that, that there is an important part of public outreach and information in this first uh, year. So we, we know that there's going to be a cost uh, associated with that. Um, but we think that um, the rope imagery could really work well. And our second idea was a community revolving loan fund and incubator. So the loan fund would provide seed funding for projects that improve social, ecological, and the economic life of the community. And it will also involve an incubation period for new projects um, that provides technical support and sort of mentoring. And the priority would go to youth and senior applicants. 
um, and you should fund it because it will generate awesome returns in the community and the, the low interest um, will, enable, will enable the loan fund to grow so it's regenerative, like the earth. <laughs> Vote for us. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, now the four of us, we're going to play another key role within PB on a city level, which is the city manager. We're going to decide how much this all costs, and then you will all be receiving four votes. <laughs> One moment, please. If you want to hand it out, not yet. Oh, yeah, would you mind? Thank you. Wait, each the individual will be receiving four yeah. votes? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. You feel really empowered? Because you only have two, like, you can vote maybe yours. So you can, like, vote. Yeah, so you can vote. Yeah. 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 I know. I want to be a So while Eliza and Andrew are assigning costs to your project, and that's something that would actually happen earlier in the process uh, during this stage of figuring out what the needs are, what these projects would look like if they were fleshed out. Um, so that's something that does happen uh, before you actually propose your project. Um, but just to give you a better sense of the real world parallel of what you just went through, um, Crystal, who served as a budget delegate uh, in, in uh, the East Harlem and Harlem uh, District in New York, will talk about what it means, what it looks like to narrow down a list of hundreds of ideas that you get from assemblies uh, to a short list that you can put on a ballot. So. We have, you have a question? Um, I just want to clarify something. So our Community garden actually is a lot like your food and ecological space. So we had a vision that it would be both like a learning center for adults and children, and that also in this garden we would grow like sustainable like vegetables and fruits that low income people could purchase at a low price. So we wanted to yeah. So we thought you could oh, combine in somewhere. Right right I wanted to clarify that there. I think that we might uh, you have to mind those ideas. <laughs> okay. As a savvy uh, strategy. <laughs> <laughs> So actually speaking about the uh, budget delegate um, responsibility, so Nikki, um, you know, that process that you just kind of did, kind of combining projects, that's actually one of the ways in which we as delegates are able to kind of help narrow down the hundreds of ideas that come out of the neighborhood assemblies. Um, I mean, there's a lot of ideas that come out, and a lot of the times, um, a lot of them overlap, so that's one way automatically we kind of see what projects are overlapping and have a similar interest and kind of either couple them or eliminate duplicates, right? Because we want to um, come up with final projects that are in the best interest of the most amount of people. Um, so um, as a delegate, there's a ser uh, series of meetings. So initially, we want to narrow down those ideas, um, like I said, through bundling or coupling or eliminating duplicates. Um, and then this. You have a question? Who wants to join with the team? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't want a little tiny $30,000 team. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to make a quarter million dollars. We could do bourbon. I don't know. Yeah, we could do bourbon. Do you have to take a bourbon? Yeah. We want that better. Oh, that's our separate idea. But, but, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my god. So, oh, yeah, we can't go out. <laughs> Can I have your attention? Thank you. Um, so, you know, it really narrows down to just a very small number of ideas, just like we're going to be narrowing down today. Um, and to get to that process, um, you know, one, it's through the expos, getting that feedback from constituents, but also within the group of delegates that you're working with. Um, a lot of times it, you know, it can get somewhat heated. People are very passionate about their community and, and these ideas and, you know, being a good representative of, of, um, of the community. Um, but also a lot of times it also boils down to the cost of the project. So that's where um, when you work with the city staff, in identifying what the real cost of these projects are, that you're able to understand sometimes what the limits are, um, and you know, unfortunately, some things have to be eliminated because we want you know the most projects that are going to benefit the most people. Um, so it's really through that process, really a lot of conversations and understanding how budgets work and how much things cost. You know, I think during the process, I learned so much more about 
the cost of things that you kind of just take for granted, like repaving a new sidewalk, you know, or a new, getting up a new light pole, like simple things that you just don't really think about, but you definitely don't want to walk down the street constantly tripping over a crack in, in the sidewalk, right? Question. Quickly, can you talk about neighborhood assembly? Mm -hmm. So were there different neighborhood assemblies that just came to certain Yes. and what they yes. So um, we had a youth neighborhood assembly. So um, this year, the voting age is 16 and up. But you can be as young as, I think, 14 to actually participate in you know, giving out ideas and, and such. Um, there's also, there was also a um, Spanish neighborhood assembly, so for Spanish speakers. Um, East Harlem, you know, there's a lot of, um, so our Hispanic population who speak primarily Spanish. So, you know, making um, assemblies where people are comfortable um, voicing their opinions. Um, so those were the two primary um, special assemblies. Yes. For the youth one, why did you put the voting cap at 16 if you had 14 girls involved? You know, I mean, maybe you weren't involved in that decision, but. I can yeah, I want to talk about this a little bit after we're done oh, with right. I'd be happy yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time with you. And you also have a senior one. Right. Okay, so I think, are we ready? We are ready. Can I ask another question about the budget targets? Or are we, uh, I can ask it later. Yeah. Oh, we will we'll have Q&A. Yeah, okay. so after much deliberation, we have come up with the cost of your projects. Um, so. Is there approximate? $200,000 and we have $500,000 to spend so you will you each got the little stickers representing one vote and, well four votes but you can only vote one vote per project um, so you can't stack your votes I know I know I'm on to this group <laughs> but so I don't know, without any further ado, if you all would like to begin the process of voting questions, questions. Um, you have a question about, so in the end, if you if say the $450,000 one gets the most votes, so is, is that the only project that gets funded? Well, so say the $450,000 one gets the most votes, and then the second one is this one, They would. it's up until the $500,000 okay. is okay. spent. And this is a real issue within PB and mm -hmm. the process as to deciding what happens when you have other projects that could be funded, but they weren't within that ranking. Is it some, like, would a conversation happen, like, well, if this is going to take, could this possibly take, like, $440,000, and then we can also do the net thing in barbecue space, and, like, like redistribute that money a little bit, or is that more complicated? You <laughs> probably have to delete certain elements, right? So if you said, we are doing, uh, 50 units of affordable housing, well, you might have to do 30 units of affordable housing, yeah. and then you'd, have, you'd be able to afford the net thing, right? So it's yeah. about reassessing the cost of things based on some real numbers. And often, a lot of things co end up costing more than what you budgeted. But that's but a conversation. Do negotiations happen, and is there like a process for that? Yeah. So that's something that would happen before the vote. So you'd have that time to retool some of these projects trim them down as you just described, that would also be the work from budget delegates uh, or whoever is you know, developing these proposals. Um, but yeah, it takes some creativity and some compromises have to be made. Um, so in this case, yeah, you would see those estimates and say, we have to do something that's probably not gonna win, right. taking up all right. the money. So I know during our process, there were some really great, amazing projects that I want to be spoke with the different city agencies were just almost took up the entire million dollar budget. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't enough to take away from the scope of work. So we decided to not 
move forward with that particular project. You know, maybe there were some other ways that we that project could be funded that we could think of and you know talk to those groups separately. Maybe, maybe we can retool that now just to make, to keep it in you know in the in the running. Um, that the affordable housing mm -hmm. project that's four hundred fifty thousand. Maybe we'll say we'll reduce that project. Some yeah. existing housing, and we can get it down to three seventy five. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so why don't we start? So the, the community wellness one could be prepared with that. Fifteen? Oh no, things are kind of tight. I think we can do three sixty. I think we can do three sixty. Yeah. No, because <laughs> well, the community wellness can go down ten thousand dollars too. So why don't we just start with the groups up front? Already have the voting. Yeah, does everyone watch that? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Is it secret voting? Usually? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's secret voting. Is it possible to do it over the years? Wait, we get to use all the rooms. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know what it looks like when you need to see this camera. So I'm going to switch it. Yeah. You're switching? No, I'm asking you. Uh, yeah. In this situation, yes. Everyone likes their brother. That sounds loud. When I'm like, I want to go to the bathroom. No, I want to go to the I like to watch. It's like a swimming area, but you can only go. Brian, if you don't have any bias for a while, just come up with a rope today. Thanks for the love. I only want to write down the words because rope comes from the general idea. It was so professional. I was like, that would be the best. I like that. I like that. But no, I want to make you know. 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 We have a commercial quarter where we have like three or four different tax policies that rent out for the entire year and then up for five or four months and then break up for the other eight months. Like that's how much it is. That's exactly the house that I'm And that's why, yeah, like, I'm really interested in how we start confronting that. My question is, like, how do you, like, legally, how do you keep out of those? Um, it's, 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 so I could like walk around the room and like a and on my phone and just like do a little video. I know that it's fun. I just like, or even better, you know, platforms where at a conference, people can live stream video from the campus. So, like, that's an average of the total. And then we just have like all these different there's a session going on right now about storytelling and there's not any. We're not Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
they felt, or this is also going into the Q and A session part, where a little bit of pushing into the time now. But if you want to talk about how you felt, or if you have questions about the process, I mean, both Crystal and Isaac have worked with processes, and Andrew and I have been very process heavy and trying to get it. Um, questions, feelings, comments. Do groups know ahead of time with their proposals what their allocation might be? So like, for example, if there's another group project that is very similar, they can consolidate? Because mm -hmm. like, yeah, we saw the community garden and compost, but you know, they couldn't consolidate with us because they didn't. So does that happen with the, the budgeting? Yes. Yeah. So um, initially when you get the ideas for what um, projects came out of the neighborhood assembly, um, those ideas are then put into a specific um, committee. So you know which committee is doing which project. And so there was times I worked on the parks committee. Um, so a lot of the projects that were within parks also somewhat overlapped with the education committee. So there were times we had conversations about, well, why don't you guys take on this project from, um, you know, from the parks committee so that way it's kind of not lost in shuffle, or let's combine this somehow. So yes, that process definitely does happen. Where in the world is this extra $175,000 coming from? <laughs> <laughs> if you already had it, why didn't you tell us about it? If you don't have it, I can get it. <laughs> like, would it be realistic what you did today? Well, actually, in New York uh, last year, um, what district is Melissa in? Eight. Eight. Um, you know, how much was she started? She started with, she pledged at least a million yeah, yeah. of her uh, three or so million dollar capital discretionary budget, and she ended up funding to almost two million worth. Yeah. So if you're in a context where there's, you're using part of a budget, say a discretionary budget, there's more flexibility there. If in a context like Vallejo, California, where you're dealing with a fixed $3.2 million cap, because that's a sales tax that's been, um, that's a sales tax that's been collected, and the limit has been set by city resolution. There's less flexibility, and you have to stay underneath. So it depends on the context. Do you, do you, ever, get, five minute mark. Um, do you ever get match funding for that? So like, for that extra, so like the first, I don't know how much was left over when we did the other two. Uh, so you went over by like 175 or whatever. Would you ever partially fund it, and someone might come in and say, we'll match that if, like, could, do they do that ever with the extra, or does it not happen that way? You mean non-public? Like, well, like they could, like the public could fund part of the project if someone else steps in, rather than that project getting pushed to the side and going to like the fourth best one. Right. So a delegate could like write a grant to a bunch of foundations and see if yeah. they're willing to match. Does that or make it say by part? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah theoretically it's possible. That it's not so common because okay. it's very complicated, and so the simplest thing is to skip down to the next one that fits within. But certainly, it's not impossible. Uh, what are some lessons learned about actually getting people in the room? Getting <laughs> um, people in the room. Well, one, it's really important to do as much outreach about you know the neighborhood assemblies as possible, um, especially also about this you know the specific the special neighborhood assembly. So for seniors, if you're going to do a senior um, neighborhood assembly. You want to go to where seniors are are going to be. You want to have the neighborhood assembly at the senior citizens home. If you're doing something on education or youth, you might want to have the assembly at a school where you know parents don't have to then take their their child somewhere that's out of the area. Um, so just a lot of outreach, you know, in advance, um, making partnerships with organizations that can really help spread the word, um, that can have a further reach. Um, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just to add something to that and to tie it into your question earlier about why the discrepancy in voting ages. Um, so in the model of participatory budgeting that my organization has been forwarding in the US and Canada, um, it's slightly different than some of the other participatory budgeting models that have been used around the world, uh, specifically in that uh, in starting the process and building it from scratch, uh, we involve the community in that process. So it's not just an institution that the government says, here, it's here, plug in, but rather a bottom-up construction of the PD process. Um, in most cases, through what we call a steering committee, which is just a group uh, of various community members and community organizations and leaders that we convene um, once 
it's clear that money is available to do a PB process, and we say, what do you want this process to look like? Um, what are the parameters? Um, how are we going to make sure that people uh, are in the room and get involved, and, and especially the communities that tend not to participate or are most distrustful of these uh, political processes? Um, and so there's different things you can do in both uh, deciding to do a lot of targeted outreach, but also in the design of the process, so setting the voting age lower. Uh, in this case, the discrepancy came out of people not being comfortable with um, allowing 14-year-olds to vote, but allowing them to participate in a different way, so we couldn't get that agreement. Um, but in year one of PBNYC, the voting age was 18. And then in reevaluating the process after one year, this steering committee decided, why, why shouldn't we include younger people? Um, and so it was lowered. Um, so we may see it even lower. I mean, in some places like the UK, you can have 10-year-olds vote in few processes. So <laughs> the sky's the limit in that sense. But um, yeah. Your experience in getting the budget nearly doubled was, was pretty amazing. And it makes me wonder if uh, and you guys can uh, have a sense of it, but it might be difficult to really pinpoint whether or not the process gave them more um, uh, comfort in increasing that budget when they knew that there was something specific that the community was supporting uh, behind. And so um, typically budgets get cut, and so here you get an example where it's nearly doubled. And I'm wondering if there's, uh, if you had a sense of that because they were specific, and then in a broader question, if because this is new, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe it is, if there's any data out there suggesting that participatory budgets do get funded more often than in other um, instances that don't have it, um, simply because they are specific, they are community-led and driven, and um, there's much more uh, ease in pointing to the fact that this is supported rather than just a pet project that someone has uh, worked with. Uh, I, I think that why don't we, we don't have much time, why don't we take a couple other questions just so everyone can, and then we'll try to address all of them really speedily. Yes? I really wanted to answer it because I was also a, a delegate, and my councilwoman, Melissa, she felt that way because it was so of a strong urge. And one of the projects, she was only going to fund a certain amount, so she wound up funding, I think, seven to ten. And one of them was a youth project, which was Youthville, where they actually went against or computers with senior citizens in the New York City Housing Authority. Because of the young people, because they because they voted, because they had to go into either her council office or another place, people had to go and put their votes in a ballot. And all these young people came to do it, that they actually, she actually funded it and, and raised more money. So it did have to be It did have to be Other um, who haven't, we haven't heard from you three yet? Who haven't we heard from? Uh, and then yeah. Eli. Eli. Okay, let's do these three. I forgot your name. Anna. Anna, Becca, Eli. And then if we, yeah, Becca. Yeah. I was just wondering if there's anything that's sort of like off limits from proposals. Like, is there anything where they sort of say that's not uh, something you can decide on with discretionary funds at the council person? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, some cities have varying degrees of uh, parameters on the funding sources. So New York cities are some of the most stringent. So for um, capital projects, which is the type of project that has really been exclusively used for PB, uh, project cost has to be at least $35,000. Uh, the city agency that will implement it has to d uh, deem that the project will last at least five years. Um, so it is more limited, but in other processes, like in San Francisco or Vallejo, um, it's been much more open, and you see uh, programs and services being funded through PB, projects of much lower cost being funded, so some examples. Um, in Vallejo, a uh, college scholarship fund to set up grants to small businesses, um, in San Francisco, back rent assistance grants to people uh, facing eviction, um, job training programs for youth. So it, it again, depends on the context. Is there a push to expand in New York beyond capital projects? Yeah. Cool. Yes. And we might. Do you have information on how we can get to that? Yeah. Let's talk right now. 
Um, I, hopefully this is a pretty quick answer, but I, I guess I just wanted to hear a little bit more about the time frame for each step and how that might limit the projects that are possible or support more involvement or limit involvement. Um, just a little bit about how, how long this takes. Um, um, so, I'm not sure exactly. It's about, the cycle is about, see, about six months. Um, so that neighborhood assembly part of it, and so there's multiple assemblies. Um, and so a council member can spread out um, the assemblies probably over a period of a month or so. Um, month, month and a half. And then um, the delegate process is really starting um, right before December, around December-ish, and it goes until um, about April. Yeah. So what you did in the last one or two <laughs> right. minutes of that exercise, actually, is the longest part of the That's process. That's the longest part, right? And then um, there are the, the expos, so there's a couple of expos, so people come come back out and see, you know, have that science fair type of um, experience where delegates can explain and talk more about the proposals and who it benefits and how much it costs. So that when the voting time comes up, people are more um, knowledgeable about the projects. Um, and so voting, I think we, it was over a period of a week um, at various sites. Um, we had mobile sites, we had, um, you know, a site at the council member's actual office, um, as well as partnering organization like I said, like as well. So um, yeah, the process is lengthy. But the longest period is a delicate process. Yeah, and this is really interesting to me because um, I've heard a staff member of a council member's office in New York talk about what this, this, this process used to be like before participatory budgeting. Um, and so now we have you know, at least a six month process and he has said that before PB, these decisions about what they do with their discretionary funds were done in an afternoon, wow. sitting with a council member, looking at a spreadsheet. Oh. And so that's you know what we're talking about here. It's it's, to it's a completely different thing. Um, and and democracy and takes time. <laughs> democracy <laughs> takes time. I know yeah. exactly. Um, but with that, you know, hopefully the outcomes are better too, and it seems that they have been. So. You want to hear your last yeah. question? Yeah. Um, well, you guys got five minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I have two questions. One is, has any, has there been any research into the effect of PB on democracy at large? Like, has there been higher voter participation rates in districts where there is now participatory budgeting for a few years, so it's like kind of seeped in a little bit into the community, into the culture? Um, if not, I think it's a great idea to do a little research yeah. there. <laughs> um, the answer is that's research we're trying to do right now. Cool. Um, PB is very new in the US and in Canada. Um, however, there's extensive research about PB around the world. Um, and some of that does look at the effects of PB on uh, civic participation uh, more broadly. And some of that certainly shows this sort of thing. And not just participating in traditional elections, but just creating new civic organizations and networks. Um, and yeah, there, there's there's plenty showing that, and if you are curious for your research purposes, I can point you to something cool. I'll, I'll let other people ask if there's any additional questions. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, it sounds like you guys have to do a lot of work to get this off the ground. Is, are your resources available for other people who are trying to start this off um, to make it easier, or <laughs> do we have to figure out how to facilitate it from scratch, too? <laughs> uh huh. Uh, do you want to take that one? I was, sorry, I was doing some facilitation and stuff, and I could I was just asking about resources available to start this. Um, well, I mean, all of us are resources in some capacity, and you know, no reason to reinvent the wheel. Like Greensboro, we've come at it from like a two-way direction. We started both from doing a presentation similar to this, or also more condensed that just kind of explains the cycle and, and isn't as time intensive to groups, community groups, and you know, so we have these templates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, present and available, but then we've also had like a political strategy, and so depending on how you were to do it, if it was going to be in a city or an organization, you know, like PB Greensboro is a resource, and there are other resources for like technical support, like PBP could help, like 
once you get a little bit more established. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I point you to our organization's website, which we are trying to make as useful as possible to people interested in bringing PV to their communities. Um, so there are some pages on there that might be useful, giving points about how to bring PV to wherever you are. Um, that's participatorybudgeting.org. Um, I have a couple of handouts, too, that you folks can take on their way out. Um, if you want to take a look at a sample ballot from the PBMSC process, uh, this is they. There's some info sheets about participatory budgeting. And, um, we also, do you have anything else? Yeah. So, one last question. Um, I can answer that. Wait, was she actually? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, please. Oh, that's not for that. There's still time yeah. for two minutes. Yeah. There's four minutes. Well, I'm okay. just wondering if, um, well, we've already seen and actually shown how, uh, like, ultimately a budget would be more flexible than initially, like, believed. And I was just wondering if you have any tips for maybe, like, lobbying city governments to increase discretionary budgeting for uh, peace for uh, voting and stuff like this project. Um, like say if you could like show the success of various like just great budgeting projects and also maybe show them like the research you were just talking about beforehand and show how it has a positive impact on democracy. Could we even if you're talking about like cities where they have set legislation which says that only like, three point two billion dollars or you know, for example, be allocated for this very budgeting, could we lobby to increase that amount? Mm -hmm. Or it have to have done that. Yeah, it's something that we are current, uh, you know, always trying to do, push push the, uh, push the limits that are set, uh, expand not only into larger amounts of money, but into different parts of the budget. Um, so for instance, in New York City, we're trying to get beyond just small discretionary budgets in each, in each district, but part of the city central budget um, and budgets of its agencies, like the New York City Housing Authority, the public housing. Um, that's one of the main fronts that we're we're pushing on, um, and that's that work of advocating for more influence is taken up by community organizations, community groups that are involved in the process, um, and it's surprising because a lot of people that participate, just regular ordinary folks that participate, don't always think about the possibilities. And so we're trying to encourage folks to think beyond just a million dollars, which is what it is in the individual districts right now. Um, sometimes it takes just like breaking through with one council member, like Melissa Marfiorito, to show that it can be more than that. Um, so you, you've already identified like one of the main strategies is just you know city officials, elected officials don't want to be the first to do something, but if you can point to another instance. Um, it, especially a, a similar city or a similar situation. I mean, like in, in Brazil and other places, you have tens of millions of dollars being used for, through PB, you know, upwards of 20% of the city's annual budget. Um, so there's all sorts of information. Yeah, and I think it's also good, like in Greensboro, like we're trying to be worked into the actual budget and not necessarily be dependent on the discretionary funds. Yeah. And so there is like a difference into like what that means for like, how the money goes forward and how the decisions are made. Yeah. But it's good to set the initial bar high. <laughs> <laughs> One last question. Yeah, well, it's um, uh, there's it's kind of a comment because of, um, there's also uh, a lot of money for transportation and deciding on how to do different public transportation. So participatory budgeting can really be utilized in that way. Uh, and there's something called MetroQuest, which is like an online kind of thing, and they have kiosks and things like that, and you can get like 10,000 people voting on like three different phases, and they consecutively they get more and more detailed and specific, and it helps educate people as well. And so it's a bit of a different approach, but uh, that's also a good one. Wait, what are they voting on? Um, the website's uh, MetroQuest. Oh, sorry? Uh, I'll look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for participating in this process and uh, feel free to ask yeah. us questions. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and any folks from Boston, PB will be starting up in the Boston area shortly, so let's get in touch. Um, in other cities, there are 
at least two dozen other cities like Greensboro where community organizations uh, are interested in pushing for TV. So, talk to us.